On today's episode, we are doing 20 IKEA hacks. This is a compilation style episode, so sit back, relax, and maybe even DIY right along with me. But let's get started on our first one. We are gonna be doing a bedroom makeover, and this is the first piece that we're working on for that bedroom makeover. So it's a Hemnes dresser. So on these Hemnes dressers, I've always felt like the, the top piece sticks out a little too far on either end, and it just looks off. <laughs> and so what I decided to do was trim off about an inch on either side to make it look a little bit more proportional, if you will. And so I took some painter's tape and taped it down and used that as a guide to cut off the excess on the edges. Now, if you have a circular saw, it would probably work a little bit easier. It would keep you a little straighter. I used a jigsaw because it was quick and easy. I grabbed it, didn't think much about it. And so I did have to go back in and kind of sand down some unevenness, but in the end, it, it did turn out, it looks good, it's fine. Unfortunately, when I kind of cut, it chipped up some of the wood, which I, in theory shouldn't have happened because I had taped it down. I don't know if my saw was just not, my blade was not sharp enough or what, um, but it, it's no matter. I kind of just cleaned it up a little bit and sanded it down. And then I added some wood putty to that and we let that dry while we moved on to the front of the dresser. So the first thing I did is I removed the hardware and then I had it in my mind to do kind of um, this wood trim effect on the dresser because I'm going to be taking Making this bedroom slightly more modern than maybe the rest of my house. What we're gonna do is we are gonna take these, I believe they're a 3 8 inch square dowel, and we are gonna do an asymmetrical design on our drawer fronts. We don't need a saw for this. We're gonna just use these miter shears. They're, it's gonna come in super handy. And then we'll be using some tiny little pin nails. They're about 5 8 inch thick, which will be thick enough to go through our wood dowel and then go into the dresser. What I was thinking is on an angle this way from here to here, and then we'll do some vertical ones going on the bottom. So we'll just cut the tip off of this just ever so slightly. And then what we can do is I'm gonna have, get a pencil and we're gonna make our marks. So that's our first one. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip obviously where that is and just continue it on down over here. So that's what we're trying to do here. And we'll keep going. I evenly spaced it out using um, just a piece of scrap wood just to make sure that each space was even and not uneven. I started from the top left-hand corner and kind of moved off to the right until we had our angles finished. Okay, so in my initial plan, I just thought I would put this here so it was more continuous. But looking at it on a whole, I think that that looks too busy or like I'm trying to fix a mistake and that looks a little more intentional. So I think we're gonna remove that and just have it have a line through it. And then I wanted to run some vertical pieces meeting up into our angled pieces. And then I just made sure I filled all of the nail holes and made sure after everything was dry, I did a good sanding on top. I sanded um, the dresser, I sanded off all of our putty marks and it was ready for paint. Now, if you ever see me use black paint on furniture, on walls, on drawers, anything that is not chalk paint that I had to have mixed, the color is most likely Sherwin-Williams caviar. And I just love it. I think it's a beautiful color of black and that's what I ended up using on this dresser. The only place you need to really be careful is probably on the dowels because it was so close to the actual color of the original dresser that um, 
I don't think you're gonna need many coats, if that makes sense. And then let that dry. It was looking good. I was so excited. And I had actually a different idea for the drawer handle. I was gonna do like a long bar across it, but I figured we already had so much going on with the angles of the dresser. So what I decided to do is I ordered some edge pole handles to put on the top of the dresser and we attached those and they were in the brass color. It was the perfect finishing touch and it just turned out gorgeous. I love the way this turned out. I am super, super excited. My son got a sneak peek of it. He loves it. He's super excited with the direction I am taking the room and I I just love it. I think it, it all it was was $10 worth of wood dowels, a little bit of elbow grease and some paint. And we have totally transformed the look of this Hemnes dresser into something very custom looking. And I just love that. Simple changes equal great results. Okay, my next couple of hacks are dupes. I love doing dupes and I love doing them with Ikea stuff because I feel like Ikea is already trying to emulate Pottery Barn on so many levels. So I found the Vic Hammer nightstand on the website and I knew that it was going to be a good dupe for this other one that I found on Pottery Barn that was over $600. And the one that at Ikea was $89. And so all I did is I took it home and I proceeded to follow the instructions on how to build it. It went together way faster than I thought. This one was super easy and I did two of them and the second one went to, together even easier. I mean, I think I did both of them in under an hour. So you can do this, uh, just follow the instructions. They're pretty self-explanatory, very, very good. With them built, I didn't need to do any spray painting, anything, it was already black. So my idea for this is you could do like that peel and stick, like contact paper, but I thought it would look a little bit more realistic and be a little bit more durable if I did, and also kind of add a cool texture, if I did peel and stick flooring. <laughs> and it was really affordable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just cut this down to fit like the door, the, the drawer front, and then we'll put some on top and some on the sides, and maybe some down here since we don't have that bottom shelf here. I thought maybe we could mimic that right here. So let's start sticking on this vinyl flooring. I think it's gonna work out great. I'm really excited. Let's do this. What I noticed is the box of vinyl that I got from the Home Depot was pretty dusty from being in their store. So I think some of that dust kind of worked its way on the vinyl because some of the vinyl didn't want to stick too well to the sides where it was vertical. So what I ended up doing for some a few of the pieces, it was kind of hit and miss. I think it was like, depending on how dusty it was, I don't know. Um, I used a little bit of spray glue. You could do that and, and it will, it just needs a little bit more adhesive and then restick it and then it was fine. Then I needed to add a handle and they do have handles at Ikea, but I knew I had seen one at Hobby Lobby that was really nice and looked really like the Inspiration one. And they originally are $11.99 a piece, but I got mine for on the 50% off. So it was like $6 a piece and I used that and I had, I just took some painter's tape, stuck down where the holes were, marked those and then made sure it was centered on the drawer and then drilled holes for the handle. And the handle was ready to go. Like it was super easy. I didn't have to paint anything. And then I just attached those handles. It looked so good. I love how this turned out. This is also going in that son's bedroom. This was so easy to do. All in all, I think I have about $15 on top of the $89 that I spent on the nightstand. So $105 for each nightstand versus over 600 for the inspiration one. So cute. I love how these turned out. It was super simple to do. You can totally do this. I hope you enjoyed that.
that. Up next, I've got another dupe. I found this uh, black pillow with like a leather strap in the center, and it was, I believe, $54 to $56 for this one pillow. Well, these black pillow covers that I get at Ikea are $3.99, and then I had a little bit of this faux leather that was kind of similar in style that I just cut off like a half an inch strip, anywhere from a half an inch to three quarters. Just try to keep it nice and consistent. And also, I think that there's some leather ribbon out there that that would make this super, super easy. And normally I like to sew things on. In this case, I just decided to glue it on. Um, the basic construct of the pillow was sewed is good. This is just a little bit of an embellishment. So I just glued this on the center of our pillow, put it on a pillow that I already had, and boom, so, so easy. That was super easy hack, right? You get a similar look for, oh, yeah, I don't know, we'll call it $4.50 versus $56 or wherever that came in. And it's a massive savings, really cute. It's This is gonna go on my son's bed as well. Moving on to our next hack, I started out with one of Ikea's clocks. And then all I needed to do was get a little loop handle and I really contemplated hard about just leaving it gold um, but ultimately I took out the the little screw that comes in it because you can easily twist that out and I took it outside and I spray painted it black at the same time we were doing the the leg for another project and I let that fully dry and then what we're gonna do is just mix up some epoxy and stick that right on top of our clock at the back part let it fully dry and then if you need to do go back in and do some touch-up paint you can then we just set it on a little like a tripod for a picture frame that I also picked up at Ikea I think that that was on sale for 250 or something like that okay so that was it for that DIY super easy am I right you literally spray painted a little loop glued it on the top put it on a tripod easy peasy I love it and I think that we spent $9.99 on the clock so I'm gonna call it ten dollars two dollars on the little knob on top so we're in it $14.50 and right now you can find those they, they call them the pocket watch clocks for this size it would be considered one of their larger sizes and it's on sale right now for 80 bucks I think the original price is 100 bucks we did ours for $14.50 huge savings very similar look yes ours is just sitting on a little tripod instead of being permanently attached it's a very very similar look and i think that you get the same utility and bang for the buck and i love it and i hope you do too so i found this a piece of stemware at ikea the stem was a bit longer than our inspiration one and that is probably like my biggest problem with it other than that it had the perfect cup for it. So all we're gonna do on this is I decided to prime the glass because it is glass and I wanted it to be a bit more durable. And then we let that fully dry. And then I came back in with my favorite gold spray paint called 18 karat gold by Krylon. And I did a couple of coats of that. And on all, both of those, you kind of flip them over in both directions, come in from different angles and get that covered really, really well. So we could just leave it like that, but on our inspiration piece, there was some like, brushed effect on it and our gold spray paint does not have that so I got out some gold craft paint and I got out a chip brush and I decided to dry brush on some other gold in kind of that brushed rotating pattern and so we just very carefully dry brush that on and let that fully dry then I also came back in with some rub and buff and then I kind of layered that in until I got the effect that I liked and it really does have a brushed effect then I took one of the tall glass cylinder bases from our three-piece set I'm gonna use I think two out of that set this time and then I'm also gonna be using a vase from a couple episodes back all I'm gonna do is set that inside my stemware and then I had a long candle that was kind of skinnier than normal that I picked up at Hobby Lobby in Utah of all places and I brought back the excess with me from that trip and I stuck that in and it's a very very similar look now you'll see in, the, in some of the other DIYs that I do use some epoxy you could definitely epoxy this base into place and it would be a little bit more stable in my 
my opinion, but I, I wanted to have the option to lift out the base if I needed it for something. So we're just setting it into place and we have gotten a very, very similar look for a fraction of the price. The inspiration version was around $60 for one of these. Our version came in at about $13 without the candle and with the candle it was about $15 so huge savings over the original I really love our version I think it looks high-end beautiful and I hope you enjoyed that too okay, next up we are going to tackle a nubby blanket and I kind of oscillated on a couple of different projects they have a really cute pumpkin pillow at Pottery Barn that is very fall-like. But ultimately, I decided on doing their kind of boucle pillow that they had, and it retails with a feather insert for $59. And we are gonna recreate that for less. The first thing I did is I folded over our blanket to double it up, just because I felt like otherwise it would be a little too thin for the front. And so then I took uh, the pillow cover of the pillow that we are going to be recovering and it's just one that I had and I wanted to put a new cover on it and I used that as our dimension. So what you're gonna do if you don't have that is just take the dimensions of your pillow and add about an inch and a half. But I had a pillow cover that I could use as a pattern and that's what I did. I cut it out, doubled it up, and then I kind of pinched off the edges just to make sure it stayed in place while we cut our next piece. And then I had a leftover drop cloth and at this point I basically consider it for free but I'll put a dollar amount on it. But yeah, having drop cloths around come in really handy. Now I personally think that they use kind of a canvas back on theirs to save money. I also think that it gives the pillow a, a bit more structure and stability by adding that canvas, um, having it a little thicker substance to sew it to is, is good. And so then I went about pinching everything into place but leaving an opening on one side for our insert to go into. So everyone, if you haven't sewed, it is so easy to sew. <laughs> we stitched around the three sides and then in a little bit, about an inch or two on the bottom side and that just gives us, so we can have nice corners. And then once we've got that stitched into place, I went around on those th same three sides and zigzagged the edges. That way, you know, the blanket wanted to fray a little bit and this prevents the fraying edges. So you zigzag on the edges all the way around and then cut any loose threads or fibers or anything like that and get it nice and cleaned up. Then we flip it right sides out and then we put our feather insert in it. Now I either inherited this pillow from like when we bought this house or I've had it so long I don't even know but you can find feather inserts even at thrift stores. Look to make sure that they're clean and everything looks good on them before you buy them but I have totally bought feather inserts before from thrift stores just very very choosy about that. You could put a zipper in it and this time around all I did was turn it back in on itself put a whole bunch of those little sewing cl clamps in place and I just did a straight stitch down it, um, closing it up permanently and, and that's fine with me. It just makes it a little simpler and, and less cost and it works great. Usually when I'm ready to replace it, it's not like I really want to wash it and if you need to wash it in the interim, you can steam clean them with a little steam vac or something like that. All in all, I use a very small section of the blanket. I could probably make several more pillows from the blanket and that was $8.99 and then about 50 cents for the canvas drop cloth because it was it's basically leftover scrap that I had and then for the pillow just use a pillow that you have on hand so for me I'm in this about nine dollars and fifty cents our ori original remember was about sixty dollars so that is a really good savings it's a very very similar look honestly nobody's gonna know the difference of whether you got yours from Pottery Barn or you made it and you can see it here with some actual Pottery Barn pillow covers so these pillows that I have it paired here with are from Pottery Barn but I think it's a really cute look I really love how it turned out and I saved a ton of money so pick up sewing you never know what you can make with it next up is a floral arrangement now Floral arrangements from Pottery Barn are about some of the easiest things you can actually do. They are so easy to dupe and they are so expensive. 
so expensive. I started with one of their cylinder vases that I got a year and a half ago. It was like a very shallow round cylinder vase and I haven't really done anything with it. I've just had it in my stash. So I knew it was perfect for this project. Then I picked up some peonies. I got a, an arrangement of that from Ikea while we were there. So I had that to work with, but I also had some peonies that I picked up at Dollar General, Dollar Tree, and so very affordably are we going to make this arrangement. This one, I tried to do a tape grid with some washi tape. It does not work well. So just stick with some original like scotch tape, the clear stuff. This will help you do a grid and then you just fill it in with your peonies and keeping it kind of low. Now, one thing that I would recommend when you do your arrangements, if you use a lot of different varieties, especially with these peony arrangements, um, it really gives it more high end realistic feel so I've got some that are less expensive I got some that are a little bit more expensive and all together they create a very very nice look then I also keep a lot of cast offs of, and cut offs for other projects of like greenery sometimes you just use the flower head but you don't use the greenery so I hang on to that and use it as filler in these arrangements so you've already accounted for that elsewhere and these are just scraps so for me I had about eight to ten dollars worth of flowers believe it or not because a lot of the bunches were from Dollar Tree our Ikea bunch was like six dollars and I had a couple of bunches from the Dollar Tree and one bunch from Dollar General and that was three dollars and then our vase was about oh eight or nine dollars so all in all I am into this arrangement twenty dollars now you will notice that I didn't do an epoxy resin base and I have done that on some of my um, knockoffs and, and dupes in the past that will add an additional ten dollars on or so 10 to 15 dollars on to do the epoxy resin it makes it permanent it looks beautiful and it's actually what they use in their pottery barn arrangements is some kind of epoxy resin so even still if you did the epoxy resin I didn't this time around I have in the past it would even at that would be $30 versus $330 for the original. So that is massive savings, whether you use it or not, you could fill it up with a little bit of water for the, the look of it, or you can just leave it, or you can do the resin. Either way, you're gonna save a ton of money doing it yourself. And you just kind of put it all in there, arrange it how you want, and keep just kind of fidgeting with it until you've got it just so, and it turns out beautiful. And it's something that you did yourself and saved hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So you win we win in that don't you so anyways I hope you enjoyed that our next pack is another cylinder kind of hurricane vase but a little different so I set out to find a little black saucer in their um, potting area and I found one and it came in a set with another little terracotta pot well it was black I just need the little saucer part but I had to buy it in the set so we're gonna go with that but I'm going to use the bigger pot in another one in just a second. All we did for this is you can take a free paint stick that you get from when you pick up your paint at the store. I always end up having extra because sometimes I'll use the paint right away and not necessarily need the paint stick that they provided so this part could be free and so then all I did was cut them down for to about two inches or so and then I pressed in some push pins that I had in my stash. They were a little bit too long so I took some little wire clippers and snipped off the tip of that and then I took them outside to spray paint black to kind of match our original black that we had going from the little saucers. Then all I did once those were spray painted and fully dried is I mixed up some epoxy and I attached them to it. Now you'll notice that I put it on the wrong direction at first. I quickly corrected that and then I let that fully dry. You want to make sure that they're going in the right direction, right? <laughs> then once it's fully dry, if you need to do any touch up paint, you can do that easily. And then what I did is I took another one of the, I think it was the mid-sized one out of our three pack that we got. And I just set that on our little stand and then put a candle in it. Super, super simple, right? Am I right? Anybody can do this. And if you didn't want to use epoxy, you could hot glue it on. Hot glue is not going to be as sturdy. So if you want to do the hot glue method, I would also mix in some E6000 so that you have something that will last a little bit better. But I feel like this is a really close match and I'm going to value our little saucer. I think it was about $6 for the, the 
pot and the saucer. So I'm gonna give it a value of about $2 and then we're gonna use that pot somewhere else and we'll put the value there. And then our free little paint stick that we use and maybe, oh gosh, I don't know, like 50 cents we'll say for the push pins, even though I feel like that's a little bit generous. And then about 650 for our glass hurricane. So our inspiration piece was originally $99.99, so hundred bucks. It is on clearance for $49. Ours came in at 850, still massive savings. It's less than 10% of the original cost and still a massive savings over the clearance price. It looks great, I love it, and I'm super happy with it, and I hope you enjoyed that hack. Next up is the variegated kind of vine thing. They have one at Pottery Barn that is $50. And I got my little plant from Ikea for about $5. And remember we used the saucer in another project and I just am going to use this pot um, for $4. So we're like $9. It was a little bit smaller. All I needed to do was I'll overturn a little tiny paper cup, set ours on top, fluff up the leaves and that's it. <laughs> and we've saved a ton of money and we have a near identical look and nobody is gonna know the difference. And that my friends is the best kind of DIY basically no effort and you get the same results as a high-end designer. I love it. Our next hack is a DIY planter. So all we're gonna do for this is I found this planter in the garden section at Ikea. I knew I wanted to do something with it. I knew I wanted to add some gold somewhere to it. I didn't know where or how, but looking at the planter, I decided it was best to just tape off that top ledge on the planter. There was a natural style point on it and so I just took some painters tape and taped that off on the upper portion and then I went back in with a plastic bag from our shopping one of our shopping trips and taped that around our um, bottom to protect it because we didn't want to get any paint on it and then I used my favorite 18 karat gold spray paint which I just picked up at the store and I sprayed the edge of the top little edge and then I decided to add a little shimmer to the interior part and spray the inside as well so that it would reflect a little bit of light. Let that fully dry. Then we removed the bag, we removed the tape, and it's absolutely amazing how this one simple switch really elevated the look of this planter pot. And then I just took two of their ferns that I got at Ikea. One was not enough, so I just actually put two pots right in there, and it is so beautiful. This was a surprise favorite for me, honestly. And then with the addition of the spray painted gold, it just looks so elevated. And then I got this little wooden stand at Hobby Lobby that I placed it on top of it just to elevate it a little bit. And here it is in my Airbnb rental. It looks fantastic. That's it for that simple, very easy Ikea hack. It looks amazing. I loved it and I hope you did too. Next up, I have another extremely simple Ikea hack for you. So I found these candlesticks and then I also found these little, I think they're a low this little tea light holder and I thought the two of them together would look amazing so I picked up a little epoxy kit and I didn't know how to stir it <sighs> these would look like disposable forks <gasps> perfect it's a wood fork, but this end is perfect. So that wooden fork that was meant for eating worked out perfectly to stir my epoxy, wipe it on the ledge of the candlestick, and then you just center the lotus one right on top. It sets up in five minutes. Just you wanna watch it because if you put on a lot of epoxy, sometimes it tends to slide. So just make sure you spend the five minutes watching it dry so that it stays nice and center. You do have a little wiggle room in the first couple minutes, but after five minutes, it sets up really hard. It's fully cured, I believe in 24 hours. That's it for this one. Then I just took some of these really cool pillar candles because I wanted something a little bit taller. You could use it as a tea light still. These don't fit all the way down into the cup. They actually kind of set on top. And I was actually okay with that. I think if you had a table that would bump 
bump easily, then maybe you would want to reconsider and use like a tea light or something that would sit down in it. But I love the look of this. And these candles were like a still. I think there were five candles in there for $12 varying heights. I mean, we're talking like Dollar Tree prices for five candles of that kind of substance. It was amazing. I think it looks really, really good. Okay, so next up, we found a desk in the as is section and my daughter really wanted it. She said, I really need a new desk, but it was not the right colors, but the price was right. The first thing I did is I took it outside and I flipped it over, spray painted the underside in a gold. And then I flipped it back up and got the top side of all of the legs in that same gold and let that dry. And then once that was fully dried, the following morning, I had originally bought one paint and found out that it needed a special like thinner. I didn't have it. So I ran to the store. I scuffed up the top with a little sanding sponge. And then I proceeded to do two coats of black paint in a caviar finish. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this was too rushed. This is not normally how I did it, but I was short on time. I normally wouldn't use this touch-up paint kit roller. What I would recommend is either spring if you can. If not, then I would use a foam roller. This one, it just didn't end up working, primarily because it was a bit rushed and maybe the temperature was also a bit cold as well. What I would recommend is waiting a couple of hours in between each coat and using a good primer as well. I was short on time. And then you're gonna want it to fully cure for about a week before you put anything on this desk. But overall, I really love the look of the desk. I hope she does too. I hope she really likes it. So even though the paint finish is not exactly how it should be, I think if you follow the proper steps, don't rush it, it will have an overall wonderful look. And I think she will get it there. She'll do another third coat and sand it down a little bit. But I love this and it was such a dramatic before and after on this desk. I believe it's the Alexa desk. I love it so much that I think I need a version. I love the overall look of this and the idea of it and with perfect execution, it will look really, really nice. Then I found this little simple end table that was $25, it was a fantastic price, but it was pretty basic. And I thought this is a very hackable item, but I wanted to just give it a quick refresh for my daughter. She really loves the black and gold. So you're seeing a theme here. So it started out black. And then what I did is we just assembled it. And then I went about taping it off and I left five inches of the bottom leg exposed. And then I took a couple garbage sacks and taped that around. It was a little <laughs> janky looking, but the idea was is that it just covered and protected the rest of it because we wanted to leave the rest of it black. Then I took it outside and sprayed it in that same gold spray paint that we've been using and did a couple of coats of that, flipped it one direction, then flipped it the other and made sure that everything was really good coverage. And then while we were spray painting that, I also wanted to spray paint the underneath of the tray that sets into this stand. And I spray painted the bottom side of that. And then once that was dried, I flipped that over and spray painted, focusing on the outer ring because that would be exposed. But I had an idea for the interior part. So I didn't worry too much about that getting full coverage in the middle and wasting spray paint on that. I let that fully dry. And then once that was fully dry, I brought it in and I bought some marble looking contact paper from the Dollar Tree. And I just traced out the circle and took some um, utility scissors that I found in their junk drawer here, cut out that circle. And then I peeled back the backing and put that on the inside of the tray. And you just peel it off a little corner and you peel it back as you go. I just used a membership card um, to kind of smooth that out as we went. But inevitably, you will probably, whenever you're using kind of a peel and stick product, you will get some air bubbles and that is normal. Then you just take like a pin or something like that, poke a little tiny hole and you can scrape that air bubble out and it really does dissipate it. Now, with any peel and stick product, it will be almost impossible to get all of them. I just kind of focus on the bigger bubbles with that. 
over time, those air bubbles do go away. So don't worry if you have them, um, just focus on the, the bigger ones. Another way you can apply that is by spraying it with a water mist, but we didn't have enough time to properly cure the paint before doing that. So I knew that that would probably miss with some of the paint finish and I didn't want to do that. So overnight though, all those air bubbles did dissipate. Now my daughter has this really cute end table that she can use wherever she wants. So she can put the candlesticks that we made earlier. She could put a planter on it. She could put a lamp on it. There's a lot of different possibilities with that. When we were on our shopping trip, I saw that cool vase and they kind of had a similar idea. I didn't love the floral arrangement that they had in it. And we are going to kind of take that idea and expand upon it and do our own floral arrangement as well. But the first thing that I wanted to do was to kind of do like an ombre effect on this vase because it did have like that metallic mirrored silver finish on the top portion, but we had a definite gold and black vibe going on. She also loves white and she has some whites in her room. And so what I thought we could do is just do an ombre effect on the top little quarter section of that spray on a little bit of gold spray paint. But I didn't want the overspray to get onto the clear glass. So what I did is I took a shopping bag and just kind of haphazardly taped it on just to protect that glass portion. Then I took it outside and just sprayed it on the upper portion with no rhyme or reason. It gives a beautiful ombre effect. So some of the overspray does kind of spray down into the silver, but that's okay because that's the look that we're going for. In the end, it was so, so cute. Then the next portion of this was, they had some twinkle lights in there, like fairy lights. And I just got a package of their lights there at Ikea and they are battery operated. And then I put the lights in there, but I left the place, the battery pack where you turn it on and off hanging out for now, just because I wanted to be able to easily turn that on and off without having to like reach into the flower arrangement and all that. Then I went to Michael's and got a couple of floral bunches I got some hydrangeas and then I found a, a mixed floral bunch that had some magnolias in it. And so I proceeded to just kind of put those in together and then intertwine them so it looked more like an arrangement. Very simple, easy to do. Those pre-made bushes kind of make it easier for you because they've already kind of thought about what it would look like as a floral arrangement. The one thing that I did try to do is do kind of like a triangular shape with our magnolias because those were kind of the stars of the show. Okay, so you just tweak the flowers until you like the arrangement. And as you can see, I've gone one, two, three, three with the main show flowers and that looks really good. And then I tucked the little battery pack into the flower arrangement where you couldn't see it, where you can easily turn it on and off. And there you have it, a very, very easy, very simple Ikea hacked base that really has a nice elegant look. I really do like this flower arrangement, but sometimes you can have high impact with a very little tools, a very little effort, and just small little tweaks can make a huge difference. In our next project, we are gonna be knocking off the Cameron Globe light fixture. This was about $150, and I thought we could do it for less. And then I found the Fruhult light fixture at Ikea, and the price difference was tremendous to begin with. I think it was around $26, and to flip this, it is gonna be super Super easy. So they do have the Fruhult in a brass originally. So if you can find that, that will cut out a step and make your life so much easier. I couldn't find it. So I ended up having to start out by spray painting the section that we needed gold. And that was pretty easy to do. And I already had the paint on hand, used hardly any paint. And I just sprayed that section. But if you can find the brass one to begin with, you can forgo that step altogether and just just go to the next step, which is where we tape off what we don't want painted, that's, that we want to leave gold and like just protect everything the best we can. And then we spray paint the next section in a flat black spray paint. And I really like the Krylon Fusion paint line. If I can find it, I typically buy that one because it tends to do a, a bit much better job. And then once that's dry, 
I wanted to switch out the globe part because the one that comes with the Ikea one is very heavily frosted glass. You won't see anything. And kind of the cool part of this light fixture was that it was clear and you could see the light bulb. So I picked up a globe one from Lowe's that was about $8. This one was clear, but it did have a seated glass. Now our inspiration one was not seated from what I could tell online. It was just a clear glass, but actually the seated one is gonna work a little bit better in my case because I'm going to also be replacing a light fixture in the entryway coming up here very shortly. And the one that I'm going to be putting in there is gonna also have seated glass. So it's actually gonna kind of tie it very nicely together. Then I wanted to go ahead and install it. So I uninstalled the old light fixture, but when I removed it, this is what I saw. <laughs> I don't know what they did up here, but there is a obvious change in texture. So like the only solution that I can really see is getting like a little medallion for like right around there to kind of disguise that other than having to do a whole bunch of drywall repair, which I don't feel like doing. So I headed to Lowe's to get a small ceiling medallion. Now I'm gonna have to probably replicate this look in the entryway since they're kind of right there, but this really did mask that ugly ring and I didn't have to do any drywall repair and it looked fine. So <laughs> this was a good little hack and solution for that issue. So I finished installing our light fixture. I put in a similar light bulb that kind of candlestick kind of one. I always really like the daylight light just because it's a fresh bright clean light and not like a yellowy light especially in that hallway where it's going to be at that daylight light will be fantastic and then I just pushed our new globe light into place it's very lightweight and it does kind of cinch it into place when you look at actually how we did the hack it was extremely easy spray paint and a new globe and call it a day and you have a near identical match. I mean, there's a few subtle changes, but if you didn't know any better, you would think that this Ikea light fixture was absolutely from Pottery Barn. And guess what? The Pottery Barn version was 150 without tax, shipping or anything. And our version came in at $35. That is massive savings, but I just think this is super easy to just get an almost identical look. I just really like how this turned out. For our next IKEA hack, we are going to be knocking off the Malcolm C table from Pottery Barn. It was $400 and I found something that looked very similar. Now the direction it went was a little bit different, but like the overall look of it was near identical. We are going to be using the Vitzjo little end table. The first thing that we did is assemble it. It was honestly one of the easiest assembly jobs I've had to do from Ikea. It went together very easily and it was pretty straightforward, at least for that part. And it did come with a piece of glass, but we are going to hang on to that for something in the future. We don't need it for this one. Then we needed to get a little bit powerful because we are going to build the tabletop. It was just a little too wide to go out and get something like a two by 12 or something like that. And to kind of mimic the top, we needed to kind of piece something together anyways. So I picked up a two by four. One two by four will get the job done, which is pretty inexpensive. So we are gonna cut this down to fit our piece. Let's get cutting. We measured two exterior pieces and I believe they were around 22 inches. You're gonna wanna make sure you take your own measurements, but I believe that's where they were at. And then we cut two at about 15 inches for the center and then two more that were about seven inches for the end pieces that are in the in-between. Then we had all of these little individual pieces and we needed to kind of assemble them into one solid piece. So the way we're gonna attach all these pieces is by doing some pocket holes with a Craig jig. There's tutorials on how to use a pocket hole jig. I'm still kind of new to it, but we're gonna give this a go and I think it will be a great way to attach all these pieces. We just stick that in here. We've got this clamp down into place and we're gonna start going. pocket holes 
are going to go in this way and then I think I'm gonna do some that go in this way so you can see kind of what we're doing. Even though like all of the pieces were like joined together, I wanted to add a couple of extra ones in here and there to just add to the overall stability of the piece and kind of tighten it up as much as we possibly could. So I threw in a couple of additional pocket holes. There are other ways, but this one was a really good option and much quicker and it will create some strength. With all of our pocket holes ready to go, I started assembling everything and I took some wood glue to kind of just oh, add more stability like once again. And then you take these screws and a pocket hole like screw top. They're like special pocket hole screws and a drill bit that help you drive those into the wood. It sends the screws in on an angle and really does create a lot of strength. And so I just went screw by screw and assembled our tabletop. Then it was done and I was like oh awesome but the thing with two by fours and this was kind of a bummer deal is there is a little curve edge on these if you can find the most square two by fours you can that is a really good way to go because these ones ended up being pretty rounded and I wanted to fill in the gaps kind of similar to our pottery barn one the first thing I did is I started sanding it down to see I used a very aggressive sandpaper with a, a low grit like a 60 grit and I was just trying to sand it down as smooth as I could. A band saw would be really good, but you know, even with all of the tools that I have, I don't have everything. And I was doing the best that I could with the palm sander to kind of try to knock down the rounded edge and try to get it a little bit more flush. It just wasn't working. So what I ended up doing is creating a DIY wood filler that I pushed into the cracks and let dry. And then I ended up having to do like a second one because as it dries, it kind of sinks down. And so I ended up doing two layers of a wood filler. You don't have to do a DIY one. It's just really inexpensive and cheap because you can use the sawdust and some glue and call it a day, but you can just buy some wood filler and fill in those cracks really, really well. And then you go in and you sand it all down really well with a heavy grit. And then you eventually go up to a higher grit sandpaper. I ended with a 220. It did still have like a rustic feel to it, which is fine because the inspiration one also has kind of a rustic flair to it. And when I was sanding, I kind of rounded out the corners and got everything smooth and looking good. And then once I was happy with the sanding job and it looked really good and ready to go, I ended up using a antiquing glaze. And the reason I do this is because I found that that mimics very closely the color of the Pottery Barn pieces. I've used it on it like a pottery barn ladder. It matched up really nicely on that. It's just the, the Waverly antiquing wax, but the folk art one, they're owned by the same company. They're very similar. So either one of those antiquing waxes would be good. I like it because it's very good on the color, but it also dries very quickly. And then we could go about sealing it. So I used a Watco clear coat in a satin finish, and I just sprayed that on. What I like about it is it's non-yellowing and it dries to the touch in about 30 minutes. Now we had this base that we built, the Ikea piece, and we built this top and now we need to put them together. This is where I had a little bit of heartburn because I didn't know if what I wanted to do would work, but I was just gonna try it. So the metal that held the glass, you had these little metal tabs, and I thought that that would be a perfect way to attach our top to it, but there were no holes, see, because it was just supposed to hold a piece of glass. So <laughs> my idea was is to drill some holes into this metal, but it was actually kind of thick metal, and I wasn't sure that it was gonna do it. But I'm like, you know what, we're just gonna give it a go. So I flipped it over, and I put a piece of wood underneath it so it had some pressure on the underside, but also something to drill into so we didn't damage anything. What you need to do here is just kind of very carefully place your drill bit into the center of your metal piece. Then you start out slow, just kind of working a little tiny hole. As you start to see a little bit of those metal shavings, give it a little bit more juice. And, and then by the end, you can give it full juice and give it a little bit of pressure and a little bit of weight behind it and drill through those holes. So there should be 
six of those tabs, you drill six holes in it, and it actually worked. And I was so relieved because I'm like, I don't really want to use liquid nails because that's just kind of like a janky way to put it together. And I want this to be kind of like a nice quality piece. Then I just flipped our dried top upside down, drove in some screws into the bottom, and flipped it over, and we had a very close knockoff of this Pottery Barn version. Okay, remember their version was $400 without tax or fees or anything. Our version was just $40. That's 10% of the cost. I like ours. It's a little rustic, but so is Pottery Barns. I think this, it, it doesn't really match in this room, but I just kind of wanted to demonstrate what it looked like and all of that. I, I don't know if I'm going to keep this piece or what I'm going to do with it, um, but I just wanted to show you that you could take a piece of furniture and really transition it. For my next Pottery Barn knockoff slash Ikea hack, where the these white ledge shelves. Now they actually have a lot of similar colors, so you don't have to do it in the white. There's a lot of wood options that match up with the original ones, and it is so much cheaper. And then all we needed to do is install them. You need to have some drywall anchors with the matching screws. It, it actually doesn't come with them, and the directions just show you screwing them directly in the wall. Well, that won't be nearly sturdy enough unless you have studs on both sides. So you just want to make sure you know how to do a drywall anchor and make sure you get them on each joint. So use a level, kind of make sure they're level, mark where the holes are, pre-drill for those drywall anchors, then you just tap, tap, tap them into place. And then once they're in place, you can just screw those screws through the front of the shelf and then you have a very sturdy shelf. This is the only part that was a little janky. To cover those screw holes on your shelf, Ikea provides stickers and I was like yeah this is janky but I went ahead and used them and it really does disappear you don't notice them once you cover up the screw head with those stickers my only beef with that is like if I need to remove the shelves to paint or if I move and put them somewhere else, am I gonna have to find a new white sticker? I mean, I guess you can find that. I'm sure Pottery Barns does not use a sticker to hide the screws. But when you look at the cost savings of $40 versus $240, yeah, I'm okay with a white sticker. It totally disappears, you don't notice, and the shelves look so amazing. Now, you can see this in my bathroom, decorated and kind of cute. If you want those nice kind of legendary shelves from Pottery Barn, I would totally recommend the Ikea ones. They are such a good dupe and literally you don't have to do anything other than hang them up. So for my next couple of Ikea hacks, they're both going to be topiaries, but I'm first going to start out with this one. It was $400. And $80. You heard that right. $480. No way. <laughs> I don't have words. That's really expensive for one little green topiary plant. If you want to do this next hack, I would recommend running to Ikea. They are kind of, um, I think, phasing out their topiary balls the in the feka, feka? <laughs> and they were $26 and it's a pretty large topiary ball. Now, if you don't live near an Ikea or they're out at your store, I see these regular at Home Goods, at Ross. So keep your eyes peeled. You can usually find these balls. They're not really difficult to find. And you do want to find them at a place like that because they might even actually be less money than even Ikea. $26 for a round ball is kind of pricey in my opinion, but when you compare it, it doesn't even compare. <laughs> now to assemble this, it was actually really simple. So the first thing that I did was take a toilet plunger stick <laughs> yeah, from a Dollar Tree plunger, um, just the stick portion, discard the plunger portion. And I took my drill and I drilled 
two holes in the kind of opposing direction. So drill hole this way, drill so it's like a plus sign in the top. I did that kind of in the grooves where you turn it in. You could use a wood dowel for this. You could go out to your yard and grab a branch, which is kind of similar to what they had, like a thick branch, and just cut that off. Use what you have. Once I had these holes drilled into the top, I went ahead and used that same antiquing glaze and, and put that on the whole, whole thing minus the ends because you're not gonna really see those. So I just kind of did it on the ma vast majority of this stick and I wiped it down. What's really cool about the Dollar Tree plunger is it has these little knots in it and so it really kind of looks like a trunk or something like that. So very easy. Then I had this black pot already on hand from a past project. I don't remember which one it was, but it started out as a terracotta pot that cost me two or three dollars. It was very inexpensive and I painted it out in a black chalk paint. Then I took one of the moss sheets that I can get at the $1.25 tree. I bought it when I was still a dollar and I cut out a round circle. Um, like it doesn't even need to be perfect. It's pretty forgiving. And once I had it about the right size in the center, I kind of clipped out like a plus sign. You'll see why I need that plus sign in just a second. But then I took a piece of floral foam from the $1.25 tree, shoved that down into the base of our pot, then put our moss down over the top of it. You can glue this all down if you'd like, I didn't. Then we took our toilet bowl plunger stick thing <laughs> and we threaded through a couple of pieces of wire and I kind of tied each piece onto that and then twisted it together. And you'll see what we're gonna do with that in just a second. But then I found a hole big enough to kind of shove our plunger stick through and then we shoved it all the way till it touched the inside of the top of the ball. Okay, so this is gonna look short, but this is gonna work out for what we're trying to match up. Then we kind of make sure that our ball is centered up appropriately, and then we pull those wires through, and then you kind of, there's a lot of little plastic pieces in these topiary balls, and then you kind of wrap it around one of those plastic pieces and twist it together. Then you can cut off the excess of the wire and then tuck the remaining um, portion back down inside the topiary ball and then you've got your like little lollipop. Then we take our topiary ball and then we're gonna shove it right down into the center of our base. Um, and then the plus sign is important because you just shove it through that and it will give it a nice snug fit around the wood piece. And that's it, really easy. You could definitely get this done in under like five minutes. It's a super easy DIY. Even with our kind of expensive fake ball, that, that big one, we're in this to maybe like $32 ish and that is just I mean you saved $450 and it took you about five minutes to put together so I don't know about you but five minutes of my time is worth $450 savings and it looks so good I personally don't think that there is really any difference between the inspiration one and this one. Nobody's gonna know whether it was from Pottery Barn or from an Ikea hack that you put together. And that is awesome. And you have the look of a $480 topiary for barely over 30 bucks. So that is a huge win. That last topiary was easy. Our next topiary could be even easier, believe it or not. So I found this one on Pottery Barn for $200. And then I picked this topiary up at Ikea for $26. Now, I think as it is doing nothing to it, it's a pretty good do. You could just leave it alone. And honestly, that's what I would do. But the inspiration one did have olives on it. So I went ahead and picked up a couple of stems at Hobby Lobby and I just kind of glued them in and kind of just placed them in to just show what it might look like if you wanted that olive look. Now you could actually build one from scratch. I've seen a lot of tutorials out there where you just take a stick and drill holes in it and glue it in. So you could even get this look of this Pottery Barn one for even cheaper. We started with this one, we added in some of the olives. Looks pretty good, right? <laughs> 
So $26 to $30 versus $200. I love those savings. It's so easy. The hardest one was maybe the end table. And really that is a doable beginner project as well. I promise you it is not as complicated as you think. And there is even a way to kind of simplify that down by just getting a solid piece of wood and just trimming it out and making it even easier. But Honestly, I think we did pretty good matching our Pottery Barn inspirations. All said and done, I saved over a thousand dollars. Honestly, we could feel proud of ourselves because we did it ourselves and we got the same look for way less. I love it. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And just as a reminder, you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.